Hello AI enthusiasts, welcome back to Skill Curve. Another mountain of files, another day of information overload. Enter private GPT 2.0, which is an open source model and which can be now trained on your own data. It is an open source AI that learns from your own documents and becomes your own personal decoder ray. Feed it your own spreadsheets, your code, and watch it become an expert in your own language. Private GPT 2.0 is your custom-built language bridge, connecting you to the secrets hidden within your own data. So, in this particular video, I'll be showing you how to set a private GPT 2.0 locally onto your system. We will see all the features that are like available within its interface, okay? So, let's go! Alright, so here I am on the official GitHub page for this like uh, private GPT you can see right over here, okay? It has like almost 45k stars and almost like 6k Fox to this project, okay? So this has been doing really well. They also released like a private GPT, the first version, which was a great success, okay? So this is how the interface will actually look like. And you can see right over here that you can read more about this thing like over here, okay? And the most important part is that it is completely open source. So you can actually play around with it and that would be a really great experience for anyone who loves open sourcing of these projects. And uh, one good thing is that uh, it can be used with any open source model and uh, you can use it with ChatGPT as well. So that's a great advantage of open source models that uh, they give you. Their flexibility is actually awesome and great. First things first, you need to open up your terminal. All right, so the first thing you need to do is like cloning the repo. I'll say like git clone, come back to like this link, which will also be available in the description. So I'll simply copy this link and paste it right here. Make sure that you've git installed in your system. Otherwise, you won't be able to do this step, okay? So you can see that it's cloning into private GPT. It will take a while and now it's done. You can see that over here, okay? So, all right, it must have created a new folder with the name of like this thing, private GPT. So, we have entered into that folder. So, I'll simply say like CD and the name of the directory. And now we are into that. Okay, you can see right over here. The documentation actually uses PyM to create like uh, virtual environments and stuff. But I am a big fan of like Conda. So, I'll be using Conda. So, if you don't have Conda installed, you can do it by just going to their website. Download the mini conda and install it in your system and then you will be good to go, okay? So, alright, so I'll say here like conda create hyphen n private gpt python equals 3.11, okay? So, it will ask you to proceed. So, you need to enter y and click enter, okay? And it will download the required packages for you. All right, so now you need to activate your environment by just uh, grabbing this uh, like Conda activate uh, private GPT, paste it here and hit enter, okay? Now from here you can uh, get the idea that your environment is activated. First it was base, now it has been changed to like private GPT, okay? All right, so now you need to install like poetry. So I'd say like brew install poetry, okay? If you're doing it all like the uh, Windows, so the installation process might be a little different. So you can check out that as well, okay? You can just like Google like how to install poetry on like uh, uh, Windows, okay? Then you will be good to go. All right, the poetry took a while and install it for me, okay? Now you need to do like poetry install dash dash with UI comma local it will install all the dependencies in your project for you and it won't take that long actually okay all right it installed everything for your project right here okay so you can see right over here the installation is completed and is done all right so now we need to run like scripts forward slash setup file one thing to note is that a lot of these settings which we are using here are fully customizable, okay? 
So all of these things are found inside of this like setup script. If we want to customize anything, we can do that as well. So if we see the settings file like really quickly, so this is our settings file, like the settings.yaml file. This is where we can actually change the data or maneuver the different settings. You can see that for the local model, uh, here is the repo ID. So we will be using like Mistral 7B instruct model and prompt style would be just like similar to like Llamas to prompting style. Mistral is a great lightweight model when it comes to like uh, the LLMs. So I think that's really cool. And if you want to change the model, you can actually choose that as well. That's totally up to you. But the documentation also says like Lava 2 works really well. If you want to like uh, choose the open AI, you can do so as well. Like you would use 3.5 Turbo 1 and you can uh, like put in your open AI's API key right here. Okay. So you could choose either of the like models because these are like cutting edge models uh, when you talk about like large language models okay and if you want to like uh, host your model on amazon SageMaker, here is where you're gonna put your endpoint and host your model there but in this particular video we're going to stick with like the default settings i'm not going to change anything so that it's easier for you to understand and follow these things okay so switching back to a terminal we'll run poetry run python scripts forward slash setup okay hit enter this may take a little while okay all right so it's downloading the embedding model and it should download actually the large language model that's actually the mistral one so that we could use that as well okay so here you can see that we are now downloading the mistral 7b instruct model this will take a while because the file is actually a large one it's around 4.4 gigabytes so it would take a while so i'll pause the video here and we'll come back when the download is completed all right so you can see here that lm model downloaded successfully all these files are necessary to run your model locally all right so next you need to run this command on your machine okay you can see right over here this is specifically for mac if you're using windows you need to search for the documentation i'll provide the link to the documentation in the description of this video as well so you can check out there how to run for like windows okay all right so i'll simply hit enter it's done you can see right over here next thing you need to do you need to uh, run this command like pgpt underscore profiles equals local make run this is an important command a lot of people skip it but make sure that you run this to uh, actually make your ui up and running i'll hit enter so it says like poetry run python dash m private gpt okay all right, so it will actually spin up the server and open up this Gradio UI on your system on the port 8001. So this is the basic interface. So let's see what this interface has to offer us. Okay. All right. There are three modes in the UI. First one is like query docs where you can upload your local file and chat with it. Okay. And the other one is like search in docs, which is pretty much straightforward. Then you have like LLM chat which actually is just like you chat with like like chat gpt you can chat with this model as well but the difference is that here it will be like the mistral 7b model with which you will be chatting so all right i uploaded one document here like state of union.txt it's a geopolitical document so i'll say it like summarize this document okay so it is actually doing its stuff so you can see right here that it's a bit slow because I am using it on like local CPU. I'm not using any GPU and I am using a screen recording software as well. So that's why it's actually slow. Uh, it actually stuck there as I'm using uh, like CPU, but I asked it about like what is said about Russian president and it actually performed like really well you can see right over here that it's like telling me if i won't be testing it anymore because on cpu it's actually really really slow and it takes a lot of computational resources so i think that's it for the testing part of this thing i think i have to make a dedicated video on like hosting it on amazon SageMaker. that would be a more sort of like professional approach okay and if you actually want to change any of the model 
So you can go to like settings.yml file and here you can actually change the model. Okay, here instead of Mistral B, you can actually change to any other model from Hugging Face, but make sure that it's in like GGUF format, which is actually supported. Okay, so that's uh, like really a cool feature of this, I believe. And if you want to run like on Amazon SageMaker, so that would be a pretty much efficient approach because you don't need any GPUs there. Okay. The GPUs are already there, so if you want me to make a video on that as well, just comment down and I will make sure that uh, a video is available on that. So, alright, I hope that this video is helpful to you and you got the idea and point like how to run a private GPT 2.0 locally onto your system and if you have like GPU, this could be really a life-changing approach for you. You can now simply upload your documents, chat with them, and that's pretty much everything, okay? For more of these cutting edge technologies and AI related videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel, okay? So I'll be back again with some other video. Till then, have a good day, bye.